Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Gentlemen, it is that time. Continuing. Thought I had to sneeze. Continuing. World War One, Mexico. Or World War I, uh, this country is Mexico. First video of the day. Give me a break. Hit all the buttons. Original link to the video. Top of the description. Let's go. We've talked about the roles that several... We've talked about the roles... I'm so jealous of their setup. ...that several neutral nations played in the First World War. Because even though you didn't actually send an army to fight, you often couldn't help but be involved... Is this the Zimmerman telegram? Telegraph? Telegram? ...in some way or another. One such country was Mexico. Hey, new intro. New. I like it. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to hey, a Indy. Great War special episode about Mexico during World War I. Well, the big thing that was going on in Mexico during the war was the Mexican Revolution. Mexico had been ruled for decades by Porfirio Diaz, a general who had fought against the French occupation and seized power in 1876. Now, as president, he used brute force to secure his regime and had a real iron grip on the country. So there was a lot of hatred for him from revolutionary factions, though his rule was marked by economic growth, modernization and stability. So the business community was on his side. Eventually, though, his economic policies allowed wealthy landowners to acquire so much land and wealth that the rural people couldn't make a living. Wages fell, and when he imprisoned his elected rival for president, the revolution began. That is the short, nutshell version. He was ousted from power by Francisco Madero with substantial U.S. aid and abdicated in May 1911. It took six months for Madero to assume the presidency, and in the interim, he called for the dissolution of revolutionary forces. Revolutionary leader Emiliano Zapata, who... F he looks cool. Gotta admit, not many people, I'm sure, can pull off that hat. But he has that mustache. Ooh, he looks good. Emiliano Zapata. Fought for the rights of the rural population in the South did not do this because Diaz's federal army was still intact. And then the Congress sent troops under Victoriano Huerta to try to put down Zapata's forces. Madero became president in November and was unable to pass his reforms because there were still many Diaz supporters who were organized and blocked him. He was also murdered in the press, the press that he had restored freedom to. Long story short, that guy, Victoriano Huerta, mounted a coup in early 1913 with the aid of the U.S. ambassador, and Madero soon found himself murdered in real life. In August 1914, Huerta, in turn, was deposed by Venustiano Carranza, who wanted to restore a constitutional government. Among his supporters Great was beard. Pancho Villa. Villa he was is familiar. That name is familiar governor of Chihuahua, the general of the north, and a militant leader that fought for a stronger regionalism and self-government. These mustaches, I want, I can't grow one. Carranza exiled Huerta, who sought international help to regain his place and conspired with Germany, but was arrested in the U.S. and charged with sedition. He soon died in prison. So, Carranza was president- I gotta shut up about mustaches and whatever and pay attention. Stronger regionalism and self-government. Carranza exiled Huerta, who sought international help to regain his place and conspired with Germany, but was arrested in the U.S. and charged with sedition. He soon died in prison. So, Carranza was president and would lead Mexico until his assassination in 1920. Jeez. Although he had been head of the Northern Revolutionary Movement, Carranza was much more conservative than Zapata or Villa, and they soon were his enemies, and now there was civil war in Mexico. Villa's forces were defeated by Carranza's and Zapata's were pretty much reduced to guerrilla warfare as Carranza consolidated his regime. It was actually under Carranza in 1917 that Mexico's constitution was signed. This was one of the first modern... Co What's with the Heil Hitler salute? Constitutions. And in I, I know it had some other meaning. Mexico's constitution was signed. This was one of the first modern constitutions and influenced, among others, the Weimar Constitution in post-war Germany. But how were relations with, say, the United States? During the Diaz period, 
There had been a lot of foreign investment, and during the revolution, the U.S. played a crucial part supporting or opposing various factions. Thing is, the foreign interests under Diaz were mining and oil companies, and they had received a lot of concessions from the Mexican government. Carranza wanted to return the oil and coal money to the people of Mexico. All of this together raised tensions between the United States and Mexico to the point where international observers believed the U.S. This is the Zimmerman Telegraph, correct? ...would even invade and try to annex part or all of Mexico. There are a couple of incidents that just have to be mentioned in all of this. The Iparanga incident. The Iparanga was a German-registered cargo steamer, and it was important twice. The first time, it was the ship that Diaz left Mexico aboard for exile in 1911. Now, a couple years later, when Huerta was president, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson refused to recognize him and suspended the arms trade with Mexico. Huerta negotiated a deal with France and Great Britain, but they didn't want to alienate the U.S., so they hired the Iparanga to do the deal. At the same time, the U.S. Navy had a small fleet off the port of Tampico. While stationed there, nine U.S. sailors went into the port to buy gas and landed in a military zone. They were arrested. Now, when the Mexican authorities learned of what happened, they released the men and issued an apology. The U.S. government demanded that the U.S. flag be flown over Tampico with a 21-gun salute. Mexico said, no way, and... Jesus, like, sorry. Uh, sorry about that misunderstanding. I want a 21-gun salute. Raise the flag. Wilson responded by seizing Vera Cruz, the largest port in Mexico, in April 1914. Now, this happened hours before the Iparanga arrived. The U.S. would control the port till November. The Ip Doggo. Iparanga was not allowed to unload since the U.S. said the weapons would be used against the occupying force. Almost Needless to say, this caused huge anti-American sentiment throughout Latin America and almost led to war between Mexico and the United States. The ABC nations, Argentina, Brazil, and Chile, met to defuse the situation. Mexico subsequently declared neutrality in the First World War, which meant that German companies were perfectly welcome to operate in Mexico during the war. There was also the Zimmerman telegram. Carranza had harbored a bit of resentment for the Germans for the support they'd given Huerta. But when the Americans sent troops into Mexican territory to try and capture Pancho Villa, which again nearly began a war between the U.S. and Mexico, he renewed ties with them. The German high command, for its part, was planning on renewing unrestricted submarine warfare, which would quite likely bring the U.S. into the war on the Allied side. And they figured that if the United States was in a war on its own continent, it would be either less likely to join the war in Europe or less able to send soldiers. In January 1917, Arthur Zimmermann, the German foreign secretary, sent a coded telegram to the German ambassador to Mexico stating just that. Germany would begin unrestricted submarine warfare February 1st. And if the U.S. did not remain neutral... I gotta check out uh, German... Um, I know that submarines are a staple in World War II. But um, I just want to see how uh, development of the submarine, how the submarine developed between World War I and World War II. Germany would give Mexico generous financial support and an understanding on our part that Mexico is to reconquer the lost territory in Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. The telegram had to go... I want to see uh, uh, when, how, how fresh those wounds are. New Mexico, Texas, Arizona. Um, admission to Union. Admitted to Union 1912. Wow. Uh, admitted to Union. Come on. History. Statehood. Um... Uh, 1845, so it, it, the, Texas is a bit old, and Texas is a little less. Uh, New Mexico admitted. So, so 1912 is, is extremely close to um, World War One. 
I did not know it was that early or that uh, recent. Uh, New Mexico um, statehood. Uh, 19, also 1912. Okay, so that sort of makes sense. Go through Britain since the German transatlantic cables had been cut. Oh, and not, of course, it makes sense. It's just that those wounds are extremely fresh. Like, if you had asked me, when did New Mexico and Arizona get statehood? I would have said somewhere in the late 1800s, I think. Is to reconquer the lost territory in Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. The telegram had to go through Britain since the German transatlantic cables had been cut early in the war. After that, Wilson allowed the Germans to use the American cable, which the Germans and Americans assumed was secure. It wasn't. The British intercepted and decoded the telegram, which, if released, would cause big anti-German sentiment in the States, but would also let the Germans know that their code was cracked and the Americans know they were being listened to. That's so awesome. So obviously the 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 um just like in World War Two, I know um uh Churchill got on the phone right away with FDR after Pearl Harbor because of how well one it's a tragedy and whatnot, but um did I say Wilson, um Churchill. Uh, got on the phone with FDR like right away and you know he needed his help so I'm assuming whoever was the prime minister in uh, I don't know if they just said it in in 19 uh, it, during World War one um, who was the prime okay uh, David George ask with um they they would also need their help uh, here. So uh, in World War One, so it's like, hey, we have a perfect opportunity to show the Americans, hey, that Germany's trying to get Mexico to 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 fight you and invade you. So come join here. But at the same time, you're also letting Germany know that you have their code, and that you you're going to give away the fact that you can get this stuff, that you've tapped the cable, and two, you're going to let the Americans know the same and so interesting uh predicament be right back guys okay sorry about that back let's go the british managed to bribe a mexican official to do a ciphering subterfuge which you can look up it's a bit long for here <clears throat> so they could eventually show the telegram to the americans without worry and the text of it was released to american media no but this is would great. also let the Germans know that their code was cracked and the Americans know they were being listened to. The British managed to bribe a Mexican official to do a ciphering subterfuge, which you can look up. It's a bit long for here. I love how sneaky the, uh, the British are, and it's really a compliment. I really mean it as a compliment. Um, it just seems like the, the British are, are kings of intelligence and just smart, smart people. So they could eventually show the telegram to the Americans without worry. And the text of it was released to American media on February 28, 1917. So sorry, I, I, I... British managed to bribe a Mexican official to do a ciphering subterfuge, which you can look up. It's a bit long for here. So they could eventually show the telegram to the Americans without worry. Well, well we need to know what that is in order to understand. And the text of it was released to American <clears throat> media on February 28, 1917, a month after the new submarine campaign had begun. At first, people believed it was a forgery, but Zimmerman himself confirmed it. There was, as you may expect, a huge anti-German public outcry, and the U.S. was now one step closer to war. Thing is, Carranza actually had a commission look uh -huh. into war with the U.S., it concluded that the United States was too strong for Mexico to hope to win against. German financial support was unreliable since just in 1916, they'd failed to provide promised funds to support a national Mexican bank. And even if Mexico, by some miracle, won the war, they'd have serious troubles assimilating a huge, well-armed, English-speaking population. Me Mexico. Hiccups. Mexico. The Germany's just trying to use you here. So Carranza wasn't interested. 
But as a direct consequence of the Zimmerman telegram, the U.S. officially recognized the Carranza government in August 1917. Mexico still would not join the war, though, since Germany was still a friendly nation. On the other side, Mexico provided as much as 75% of the fuel used by the British fleet. So there you have really? a brief rundown on the political turmoil in Mexico during the war. Awesome. And a What's couple next? of major events that nearly brought Mexico and the United States into war with each other at several points. Think how differently the world might look today if that had happened. Mexico, so Mexico is much different relationship than Canada with us, obviously. So Canada is an English speaking language, almost, almost identical, an English speaking country, almost identical when it comes to culture. Even, uh, you know, an American can't tell if, if someone's Canadian, like you, you can, you can grab five Canadians and five Americans and put them in a room and ask them to talk to each other and guess who are the Americans, who are the Canadians without, like it, my point is it's hard, but with Mexico, the the language is different the culture is different and so uh, like you said if the u.s tried to conquer mexico or the mexico or mexico tried to conquer parts of the u.s like new mexico arizona southern california texas it would be much more difficult than say a canadian you know invasion or or vice versa so that it makes it much more difficult you can read the full text of the zimmerman telegram by following like, Canada is kind of like our brother, and Mexico is like our neighbor. You know what I mean? I love you guys, Mexico. I hope this doesn't come across as, as uh, that you aren't our friends, obviously, but it's just different culture. And I live in the Northeast, so obviously it could be different for someone in the Southwest or, or Southeast, something like that. Following the link below, it is highly inflammatory. We'll also look at the world might look today if that had happened. You can read the full text of the Zimmerman telegram by following the link below. Mexico more closely, highly inflammatory. We'll also look at the U.S. expedition into Mexico more closely when we talk about Blackjack Pershing and George S. Patton because they both took part in it. Big thanks to Santiago Molina Torres Arpi for his Santiago research on this Molina episode. Torres. If you want to know more about the <coughs> USA before they entered World War I, you can watch our special about that right here. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Oh, and... Esto es la guerra moderna. Esto es la guerra moderna. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Greece is next. Great, awesome, great video. Um, yeah, cool. Mexico, Zimmerman Telegram. Next is Greece. See you guys next time.